play up through the middle and then they hit at the same time from B main and on the site. We'll see if Genji can actually survive because they've got two members in the back of the site. Right, they just have to buy time and let resources get there, but unfortunately both Guman left. and Mikhail are going to fall before the reinforcements, before the cavalry arrives. Now they're going to start to show up. Player one has to wait for his teammates, though, to ensure that it's going to be a concerted push from both ends. Sean and Wynn are going to be coming in as well. There's going to be Brax. Brax, the guy who said we need to keep an eye out for, not going to be in the action this time around. As Sean gets the best of him with a frenzy. The clock continues to tick. Yeah, 25 seconds left on that clock, so not a lot of time left. Need seven seconds to defuse, and time is ticking. Maybe Genji have given that thought up and are just looking for exits, but it seems that they are the ones that are exiting this realm. It's down to Sean. He finds a pick early. But he was the only player there. But T1 don't even have any business going towards the catwalk side. Oh, Mikael, left. that's so unfortunate. Brax about to come through, finds him, takes him down. Gimon now just trying to escape. He does get revealed by the recon bolt there. But now the paranoia is gonna, oh. just going to try to help him out. But AZK stepped out of position. And now it's down to the 3v4 in favor of T1 on Gen G's force up. They need to make this work. You need to make it work indeed. The spike has been playing to Gen G once again, trying to gonna be trying to fight to get some semblance of control back on the B site. This time T1's post planes are a bit different as they're a bit more spread out. Player one's already sitting on the sideline. Spider goes in, takes care of Sean. One member left. And it's win with 10 health. And not a, a ton of artillery to work with either. He's just gonna back off. They gambled, they forced up to try to even things up at one, and it has not paid off. Uh, all down a win, and that means for T1, they'll likely be moving on to the third round here, as Genji will not have a lot to work with. Went down to 10 HP, just trying to escape the grasp of Spider here, but once you get caught in the web, it can be difficult in this round, as he's going to have to sit this one out. A quick push in left. there from Brax. He goes in alone. Genji, we're really focused on the A side of the map, but... T1 that find a little bit more space and will now start to funnel their resources over towards that side. And once again, we saw this against Complexity. T1 perfectly okay with playing very slow early on and then making a hard hit. That's exactly what's going down here on the B site. The thing is, they don't even require much of a hard hit at all. Genji just down to two members left. Player one, very weak. So the, the hit... Is, it can be like a, a sneeze at this point and they're going to blow Genji over T1 in firm control. Flawless round for them means the, the middle. Um, and Genji have consistently given it up. They have a tripwire there, but it's this lack of mid control that I think really favors T1. Because if they want to go hit the B site, they constantly, well, not constantly, but a lot of their looks encourage presence towards the mid side. And if Genji completely give it up, they're leaving their boots on the oh, ground, maybe bridge. playing contact on the sites themselves. But the rolling carpet is going to be rolled out. Wynn finds an early pick, escapes, and now Genji forced to play the retake in an advantageous position. Yeah, very well played left. for him to get that pick and get away with his life was exactly what Genji needed. Yeah, the spike is going to go down, but Genji from a position of power are going to be able to fight back. The only thing is that T1 is establishing their post plant positions. Furthermore, you see the Sova rotating away on that anchor spot in case anyone catches around the flank. They're waiting for it. Wynn's going to get a chance. Oh, no, Wynn's no. going to get taken out. He gets CC'd and is completely taken care of. It's down to two for T1. Genji slowly but surely make their way onto the site. And really, it's off of the TF2 heavy. Mikael with the Odin just walks in, takes him. Oh. Oh, that was oh if Wynn had just walked in just an inch forward, he would have found Brax looking at a camera. But now he's gonna find himself in an engagement nonetheless. He's trying to smoke himself off to safety. The paranoia comes through. He's still being sprayed. He's still trying to get close. Oh. Holy smokes, an upshot to the dome. But they still, once again, the classic play from T1. Work their way through the middle and work their way through B main. They've got control, but it's temporary as Genji are coming for the retake. Oh. Yeah, it's going to be tough, though. They're all going to be coming from the same spot, fortunately for them. Nobody on T1 is going to be playing around that anchor spot, which means spike they're going to be able to get through the middle just fine. The spike has been planted. It's going to be straight up 4v4. Yeah. Genji is going to have that Empress. So keep that in mind as a, as a possibility, uh, as a wrinkle to the plan, should they choose to go that way. You mentioned at the beginning of the round that Genji just needs one more to try to equalize the financial situation here. but it's a tough one. 20 seconds left. 
Time is ticking. Genji do this all the time. They play with fire. Time is of the essence, and that is the fifth player, the sixth player in the lobby. But unfortunately for them, so is Spider as they get caught in the web. The Venom strikes all down to player one, and Spider will take him down. He will unfortunately fall to the spike. All members on both sides. holding down that site. And in a situation like that, as we saw earlier on on the map, his objective is to buy time, right? Like, just buy time so that his team can show up to provide some resources, some backup. But this, in, in that instance, excuse me, he didn't have to buy time. He was able to take care of them all by himself. So player one with a very strong start there, very good hold on that side from that back angle. And then just when things got dicey and everyone knew exactly where he was, that's where the second man came in, or well, the all five really of them came in when, and were able to take care of the rest of T1. A very strong hold there from Genji. You know, what I find very interesting about the A-side hits for T1 is that they have no catwalk control, and that is where a lot of the focus is for Gen.G. Sometimes they'll have boots on the ground on the A-side, but T1 have very rarely entertained the idea of poking through the catwalk entryway to the tree room. We see a lot of teams run that execute, and to be fair, Gen.G and Complexity, we're both running that execute on their respective attacking sides. But T1, they like the middle of the map better. They like to divide the team and play point in the defender spawn um, or other funnel in through the fruit market and make their way out to the B side. But look at this fake. Smoke down, wall broken. This is going to pull Gen.G members off to anticipate a B side push, but it never was. It was A side all along. Yeah, and it didn't look like they bit very hard at all. They're still going to be win playing across the middle. And Sean this time left. is going to be one is the one who's able to take get an opening frag and buy time. The thing is, it still doesn't look like they know very much of what's going on. Now that's going to give the position away. Player one, once again, in an anchor spot, gets one looking for a second. Oh, and yeah, baby, one. serve it up and give it to him once again in a position where he's going to be able to cause some serious problems for T1. However, AZK takes care of him once again. It's going to be a flank, however, from Skadoodle going through tree. He takes care of Sean, dashes his way wow. in. He's able to take care of Win as well. And Manapa before Win joins in on the action. Skadoodle playing ring around the Rosie. Oh, he's able to get one, but he's only got two bullets left. He's going to have to reload a 1v1. He dashes oh my away. God. He's got the blade oh! as well, and Skadoodle gets four. Oh my goodness. Gosh, that was so pretty to watch. Skadoodle is going to bring the blade storm into this round. Uh, as Spider gets the best of Sean early on, he's going to get picked off. However, as Gen G played this far more aggressively, Daze is forced to push back, and it looks like just like two ships passing in the night, these two teams rotate around each other, straight up 3v3 as the spike has gone down on B. T1 definitely didn't come in as prepared as they would have hoped for this round, leaving Skadoodle with just a classic in the Blade Storm. On the opposite side, Gen G have found a couple of upgrades here and there, but it's down to the jet battle. Skadoodle versus Win. He's about to peek through, finds a headshot onto one. Maybe here's a footstep or two, but he's down to a 3v2 here. The rest of the team don't need to help him out. Oh yeah, baby! Skadoodle with the dunk! All down to Gimo. He's gonna have to back away. There's no way he comes out of this one alive, but he is looking for a couple of exits. Something uh, of how things went down up against Complexity. Again, this is a good map for Gen.G historically, but once again, they find themselves down. I just have to go on record to say that statistically across the open qualifier, T1 has a better win percentage on the defense. We're still on the attack for T1. So this is going to be, it, the comparison is uh, 46, or sorry, 58% on the attack and 73% on the defense. So once we hop over, it's gonna be a little bit of a tougher time, I'd imagine, for Gen.G. However, this is T1's map pick. They still have to go to their... <laughs> they haven't played Haven at all, but they still have to end up going to that map anyway. So Gen.G have a huge opportunity to bounce the series back and take us to that third map. So we're gonna wait till we get there. Still not out of the woods quite yet, but considering T1 have put on such a phenomenal performance thus far, I'd imagine Haven is gonna be very important for Gen.G. Yeah, Luke Genji have given up the site. The spike is down, and they just got the heck out of dodge. But Brax, Brax is going fishing, folks, as he's looking for a kill. Guimond seems to be holding that angle that he was just in considering yeah. peeking over. But now the other members of T1 have shown up. This is action on the opposite side. 
of the map away from everything that's going down. Now T1 is starting to funnel in. Mikhail gets one. Brax trades it out. There's just one left on the side of Gen G. T1 adding insult to injury. They're going to get this the aggressive push towards A main. Might actually work out well for them. Oh, the paranoia. Oh, the paranoia was so good. But it hasn't mattered up until this point. As AZK is able to get three. Yeah, player one got one of them. But the damage has been done. Gen G down to two members left. Yeah, the Stinger is not going to really help out Gimon a whole lot. They're going to use the Hedwig there to clear him out. Send a couple of posts, <laughs> a couple of pieces of mail to Harry Potter. But Hedwig does not find Gimon there. But they still want to hit this A site. <laughs> you were waiting. I know you were. <laughs> Hedwig, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the Owl Drone has been dubbed Hedwig, no less. Another <laughs> memorable moment from our very own Simo Ostic and absolutely unreal. Gen G just down to two members left as the spike rotates back towards B. T1 looking to continue to pile it on to Gen G here. Simo, I've, I've got to tell you, I was not expecting this out of complexity. And to be honest with you, I don't know that I was expecting this out of T1 right now. Genji hasn't been able to stop anything. Well, let's 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 take a look at T1 for a quick second, okay? One, they've had some time to sleep off their loss and their victory, their loss against Complexity and their victory against Equinox, right? They've had some time to kind of let it simmer, correct? Mm -hmm. Second thing mm -hmm. is that pictures were disclosed today of T1. They're all together. They're all playing in the same room. They're in one room together, communicating. You could see the body language. You could see how the teams are reacting. And that is the best case scenario for players. When we get to LAN, you're going to see some teams shine and some teams really suffer. Because not only does LAN help team chemistry, but you also get the same ping. It's going to be zero across the board, hopefully, if that's what the LAN events end up looking like. So, for Gen G, I I don't exactly know their scenario, but I'd imagine that they're not all playing in the same room. And that seems to be the recipe for success for teams to take down Gen G. It just seems time and time again, anytime Win is in an uncomfortable position, Genji have to give up space. Space they don't want to give up because eventually you get choked into a corner and you can't do much. You left. just get sprayed down. So very tough right position here. to be in, but they still have to wait for the hit, which is once again the T1 special. Three through the food market and two towards B-Main. Yeah, it's a bit more aggressive of a defensive position from Sean here. He's going to get flashed up. Is still able to get one. He's going to reposition himself, but unfortunately dismisses right into the warm, welcoming left. arms of Brax. The leader for T1, get able to take way. care of him. But Guimon, back behind the side, is able to get one. AZK remaining. trades it out. Win with the blades. Not able to do enough damage. Brax is going to be able to get the spike down, but it did not Wait, what? matter. No, they didn't get the spike down. Last round in the half. What? No way, they ran out of time. What? I thought they had plenty of time from T1. I so that too. is what? T1 on the defense. Let's see if it's as strong as the attack. Gen G initial postures by B. Gonna get leered off. Wind's actually gonna dash in with the frenzy. No less. It looks like the spike has made its way onto B. Gen G should be able to get the plant spike down. Planted. And now, T1 have to play the retake. Brax is coming extra late to the party. He's thinking about the flank while T1 have membership towards the fruit market and towards the alleyway leading towards the defender spawn. Genji are stuck. There is a player playing point, Mikael, anticipating a potential flank, but Brax decides against it. So there's a player playing B main while the rest are on site. T1 have a difficult job ahead. Now Sean's gonna see a couple of members coming through. He's gonna dismiss out. So much space gathered. They're gonna take them apart one at a time. AZ cable trade. So will Daze, but the spike is ticking and they need to start the defuse. There's a player that hops out. It's win and it's down to the 1v1. Brax versus win. They end up in a 1v1, but both get eradicated. Their finances as well. You imagine this round without Blade Storm in tow goes in favor of Gen G probably eight times out of ten. Which means they're gonna bring that gap down to six. T1 feels a bit more pressure, but let's see if they can fend off the aggression from Gen G. I like the attempt from Brax because once he gets tagged with the owl drone, he's got a second before it pulses again. And so he's like, I'm gonna push into the cage uh, because I it's his cage, right? It's his cage that is there, so it doesn't make a noise when he comes through, but it does make a noise when Gen G members come through. So he's trying to catch Sean out of position, but they don't actually execute on the A site. And so T1 are like, well, well, where are they? We thought they were going to push in. Where did they go? Oh, no. This is 
is going to be oh, a little no. bit of a tougher spot. It's unfortunate for T1. Yeah, look around. It's win. There's one more point in Valorant and how being able to trade kills early on is so important. Those two guys tend to be there together. We saw it on that crossfire right there, uh, exiting A onto A long. We'll keep a close eye on how that continues. Meanwhile, both teams have already lost one of their personnel. T1, an important round here. It's a gun round for them. Losing this one would catapult Genji back into even standing. That is not something T1 want to, to be in a position to think about. We have, if we think about this matchup, if Genji win this map, we have no idea what T1 look like on Haven. They could be abysmal. They could be crispy clean. We have no idea. And that ultimately scares and excites Genji because they're pretty good on Haven, even though they lost to a, to a complexity early on in the previous series. Early looks here. Gimal will find Skadoodle, an important player down for the count. And it's a 4v3 retake for T1. The other thing to mention is that Genji still has some, some lighter weapons to work with here, right? They didn't all force up with their rifles. They brought some of the SMGs that they had from the previous round. So this is a huge financial round for both of these squads. Genji, if they're able to pull this away without having very many casualties, are going to be in, in a financial sweet spot. And T1, as you mentioned, on a buy here on a gun round for them. It's important for them to try to be able to convert. It looks like they might be able to save the weapons, at least, as they're trying to pin Genji down back in the in the site and hope that the spike is going to deal some of the damage, but Genji is able to rotate. You enjoyed the ride of Cloud9 against 100 Thieves, and now you can join us for this one with Genji against T1. Yeah, and then to add a little bit more backstory for you, T1 came out of the gate swinging. Genji has brought it close, and it's because of stuff like that. Win has come online. It was a slow startup against Complexity, but he has certainly found his footing as he gets the opening pick in the round. Days, unfortunately, Tony Montana would not be proud of that Odin play. He does not get the spray that he was looking for. T1 still just trying to hold on to the site, but unfortunately, Brax, once again, as far from the action as the eye can see. Gen T will be able to get the spike planted, but Spider's got other plans in store. Little does he know when playing on that 50 angle towards the archway there. But the fact that he's been smoked off is going to give Win an opportunity to switch locations if he wants to, but he's going to hold that one down. Gen just going to wait for the spike to time out. As for some reason, Brax is still on the catwalk. Maybe he's thinking that there is a lurking play from Genji, but they don't normally have any lurking plays when they get the spike planted. Complexity had plenty, but Genji, not so much. Yeah, and look, this time T1 is not even willing to put themselves in a position where they can try to box in Genji and let the spike deal, deal the damage for them. They don't even want to risk potentially losing their weapons. So they fully forfeit control of the map. They fully forego any gunfights whatsoever play the conservative way to carry their own Genji, it started out rough but they started to really come online as you highlighted when the person leading the charge at the moment has been a, a, a prime factor of it but skadoodle's gonna tell him to sit down it was traded by sean but they still made their way onto the site he also is one point away from the blade storm narrowly misses that shot azk is able to get one with a bit of utility as well as the spike goes down they try to fight through heaven, this is a brutal way to retake this site as we've seen time and time again, but so far, so good for T1. Mikael on the flank, not able to get a very important kill. That leaves player one the last one standing, folks. We've seen player one pull off insane heroics before. This time, he's gonna get tagged up, he's gonna get spotted. The tripwire was there, fortunately. Wait. Okay, they do know he's in. He's able to get one. Give him yeah. the second. Drop things down to 1v1, but the defuse is coming up. He's going to have to go aggressively. Skadoodle's able to get it to halftime. Skadoodle goes up and player one brings him back down. Zach Gen G that we see. Um, unfortunately, Mikael is usually at the bottom, but that's the Gen G that we see. The Gen G that we see win time and time again. Win and player one popping off, and Mikael supporting the team. Unfortunately, Skadoodle looking for some complex heroics, but it's the complexity of the heroics that he will make him fall. Well, and that's the crazy thing, Simo. We saw Complexity run that exact same play, right? Like, we saw that set piece coming out of Ojai, and it was very successful. This time, Skadoodle tries it. No dice. You mentioned this being a very different Gen.G from what we saw up against Complexity, and I think you are absolutely right, Simo. This Gen.G squad, even though they got pushed around a bit in the first half, are d d refusing to go away. Oh, Days. He's just trying to play contact, and he's going to get sprayed. The shock dart did not help, and the dismiss helped.
pops out Spider. Holy smokes, Sean was just trying to be the eyes for Gen G, but it's still the advantage that they have. Spike being planted. And once again, Spike T1 planted. are back in this retake position. Unfortunately, it's only Brax, it's only AZK, but a 2v3 possible here for T1. Possible but difficult. Note the Rolling Thunder as a resource for AZK. And sure enough, thank you to the observers. They cut over to him. Tries to get a little bit of info. I think doing quite yet. Player one's going to be on the flank as well, but it may not matter. Sean is able to take care of AZK. Brax, the last one standing, trying to create some space. And again, box Gen G in, but they have plenty of routes to get out as well. They're going to get away. Brax might even... Oh, you might get one here. Nope. Sean waited for a while. Uh, see, Genji have been able to, you know, balance out the economy after that second round conversion and really just sit tight and pretty on a bag of money. T1 have to find an answer or they're going to be staring down elimination on Haven and after they haven't played in the open qualifier whatsoever. Now note, T1 have plenty of ultimates to work with, right? Genji goes aggressive and tries to get onto the insight. The Hunter Fury is going to be traded in kind from both of the Sovas. Nobody has gone down yet. A bit of information was gathered, but all lives still preserved. Max holding down hell. He's going to get a chance on the win. He's able to take care of him, and the Neural Theft will give everything away. Man, that's Brax doing a, a player one cosplay there, just holding down. Let's see if he can find a couple more picks. He does get one wade, at least for the time being. He's just trying to survive. But unfortunately, it's not going to be the case. Tony Montana drops down his days. He's going to be taken down by Sean, but somehow D1 able to answer back. Oh, wow. ACK having a frenzy up above, but Sean is a factor. He is always a factor. 40 seconds remain. Sean trying to push forward. There's an op on the opposite side. First shot's not going to connect, but the spike's in a tough spot. It's going to doodle. Bro, financially, they were broken. We were starting to have conversations about Haven and what the heck's going to happen. We don't know if they're any good at it. And that round win really pauses all of that conversation, right? Genji wins that. We can essentially wrap up the map, but T1 winning that keeps things close. Close indeed, and Wynn trying to get a little closer to the opposition as he tailwinds forward. A standard setup here for Gen G, but when you've got Days, the turret just mowing down the entryway, it's difficult for Gen G to survive. It's all down to win in a 1v3. And it is possible, but he's paranoid at the current moment, trying to use the cloud smoke to give himself some space. But unfortunately, it's here kind of like the Spanish Inquisition, except from Quebec. <laughs> um, the, 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 the Quebecois Inquisition <laughs> coming through, rushing onto site. But this time, Daze is in for a world of hurt. Wind's going to find him, lock him down. ACK's got a huge opportunity here to mow down, too. He's going to find two... Gimal will trade him back, and now it's a 3v3. 30 seconds. Brax making it a 2v3. Yeah, Genji still has the spike in tow, so it's not like that's been lost. Brax through the cage is able to get one. It's just going to drop things down to one for Genji, and that's player one. He has the spike. Looks like he's going to try to actually work his way out. That's bloody brilliant. He's going to get out, but the problem is he doesn't have a ton of time to make it all the way over there, so he's forced back into this situation. Skadoodle with the operator narrowly misses. Just grazes him, but it doesn't matter. Spider was there to take care of him. He just kept it so close. T1 have to be feeling the pressure from this attacking roster. Genji with win as the tip of the spear. Are looking to establish control on B. Smokes go down, Win goes up, he dashes forward, he sees one, and he's met by the cold bullet of an operator from Skadoodle. Skadoodle still trying to hold that down and keep things at bay as he's just getting pushed around. The smokesters what? live, but he hits it through the smoke anyway. Are you kidding me? Skadoodle does it again. Of course it's Skadoodle. Uh, who else would be able to pull such a feat off? Genji still have to get that spike down. It is in the hands of player one, but they know Skadoodle is in the cave and you don't want to poke the bear who's hibernating back there. Skadoodle. Now we're going to have to deal with the closeness of player one. He does have a phantom, so he swapped off with a powerful weapon. The spike is now down. This is going to be a little bit of a tougher spot. Tailwind's out. Gimon looking for him, but there's too many. T1 just had a tactical pause, and they just reset and, and like won four in a row. And I just don't 
I would love to go back and see how that was executed because I'm still a little dumbfounded. What was the change that was necessary Yikes. for T1 to find opportunities like that? What were they reading on the Gen G movement? Because now it's just down to two, just down oh, to wow. one. It's player one against an army of T1. And the recon ball is not going to make it any easier. He does find a pick Defend there near the end on the spider, but Days finding the last and final frag of the map. T1 take it 13 to 10 on Ascent. A map that both teams were incredibly comfortable on, but we're going to be moving on to Gen G's home turf on Haven shortly. For um, It's just unreal. Absolutely unreal. Again, I mentioned the resilience out of T1, but I really can't stress that enough. Gen G had full control. Right? Like, 